Hello there, this is Daniele from Toolchefs and in this video we are going to have a look at the Cache Exporter tool. So with Atoms you can export caches which are just uh, baked skeleton data uh, alongside uh, with uh, an export of the agent types that are basically belonging to that cache. Uh, from Unreal you can export caches using the Atoms uh, uh, Cache Exporter that you can find under the Atoms Cloud menu and uh, then basically those caches can be reused uh, in both in Unreal or um, in any other uh, supported application like Maya or Houdini. Um, also in Unreal you can uh, use the Atoms Cache Actor which is just uh, displaying a cache. Uh, the Atoms Cache act Actor just to remind you is license free so you don't need a license for that. While if you use a cache again with an agent group using um, a cache reader you can also modify the cache later. So first thing that we need to do is uh, we need to create a level sequence. I'm gonna call it uh, cache sequence. And inside the sequencer, for that sequence, we need to uh, drag and drop all the agents group that we want to export in the cache. So I'm gonna just use one, but you can have multiple ones. Then also it's important to know that uh, uh, we're gonna use whatever frame range that you have uh, um, in the sequencer for exporting the cache. So for instance, I'm gonna use 90 for now. Uh, and then for the agent groups, uh, for each one of them, you need to add a track for the static frame and set a value for uh, basically the, like the set two values for the start and end frame. So at frame zero, of course, I'm gonna set um, value uh, zero and then at frame 90, I'm gonna set um, a frame, sorry, a value 90. So whatever value, whatever frame you are at, you need to set a different value at the same value of the, of the frame itself. Then for the keyframes, you also need to set the interpolation to linear because otherwise the, the cache won't actually look uh, uh, right when you visualize it later in Maya or Udini or even in Unreal. And once you have done these steps, basically you're ready to go. So you, we can go under Atoms, Crowd, Cache Exporter, select the sequence here, provide a cache, uh, an export path, and uh, provide a name, say, click Save. And then from here, you can also provide these two values. So the cache start frame is basically the frame uh, from which we're gonna start exporting the cache. So here we have a frame of uh, zero to 90. If I set up a, um, a value here of 10, it means that we're gonna start exporting our cache only from frame 10. So the first 10 frames will be ignored. Also, you can change the start scene frame, which is basically the value from which, uh, the frame from which the um, simulation will start. So if, for instance, we set it to five, uh, the simulation will start at frame five. If you set it to a value that is greater than the cache start frame, uh, this will actually mean that uh, uh, the, um, your agents will look in a static, will actually have a static pause uh, in the frames that are between the cache start frame and the start scene frame. So I'm gonna leave this one at zero for now. Once you've done these steps, uh, you can click export. success and then if we go in um, on disk we actually see that uh, we have uh, um, basically all the files for our cache from ten, uh, frame 10 to 90 and also the agent types. It's important to know that the agent types whenever we export them from Unreal they don't contain any skin mesh so if you're planning to use uh, this cache in Maya or Houdini you need to have uh, your agent types properly set up there as well. Well, if, if you reuse them in, uh, in Unreal, it's a different matter. We can, in fact, uh, create a new folder. Let's call it cache. I'm gonna go in there and drag and drop the first uh, file of the cache, which is the one without padding. And this will cre create the cache here. Um, whenever we uh, drag and drop a cache into the content, we are gonna check if uh, the agent types that are used by that cache are already in the content, and in this case, uh, um, the man has been found, I'm gonna use that one, and the woman has been found as well. So I'm gonna save this asset. If I double click here, you see that these agent types have already been assigned here to the cache. And in fact, they are also the ones that actually live inside the content agent types folder, which is the, basically those are the agent types that are being used by this agent group at the moment. Uh, it's also telling us we have it, um, frames between 10 and 90. So we're happy with that. I'm gonna delete this agent group. Yes, I'm gonna create a new agent group and assign a cache reader 
and I'm going to drag and drop the cache to here and as you can see now here we have the cache so if I press play you see that uh, our agents are gonna stop after a while and this is because uh, the the cache are, has reached the end frame uh, if you want to see this looping there's no way to do it in the cache reader but you can do it uh, in the with the atoms cache actor there's an option there uh, but with the uh, cache reader you have other options like for instance you can uh, modify the cache which is something that uh, you can't do with the atoms cache actor so for instance we could change the frame offset which is the start frame we're actually for offsetting the entire cache of 10 frames uh, you can even move rotate scale your agents if you want um, for doing this you can actually use the layout tool the layout tool is covered in another video so please uh, check that out as well if you want um, but yeah so basically this is what you can do with the uh, atoms caches uh, hope you like this video thanks for watching